welcome to Stream Speaks, and in this BNF bite size style video, I'm going to be covering epilepsy, mostly focusing on different anti epileptics and different types of seizures. For more on, for example, driving regulations and restrictions, status epilepticus, or more information on epilepsy, then do either refer to the BNF or my Serena Speaks CNS video. So with most anti-epileptics, they're given twice a day, but there are a few that have a long half-life and therefore can be given once at night. These include, for example, um, lamotrigine, phenobarbital, phenotoin, and the one that I find very hard to pronounce, parampanel. Parampanel? You get what I mean. Now, monotherapy is always preferred. And if monotherapy with a first-line anti-epileptic has failed, then we would want to try monotherapy with a different anti-epileptic. So with the other conditions, it may be that if treatment has failed, then you might add another medicine on top to try and get that adequate effect of whatever it is that is required. With epilepsy, though, we want to try and get that adequate effect, but with monotherapy. Now, there may be at times when actually more than one anti-epileptic medicine is required, in which case then the risk of interactions and toxicity, um, such as that increased risk of side effects, all of that needs to be taken into account. So if we're switching from one anti-epileptic medicine monotherapy to another, that withdrawal must be gradual. And if we are using two or more um, anti-epileptics together, then as mentioned, need to watch out for that risk of, of um, interactions because the two antiepileptics could potentially interact together. It's usually caused by hepatic enzyme induction or inhibition. With anti-epileptics, we can nicely categorise into three categories. For convenience sake, they're, they're categorised. The names are category one, two, three. Could not get easier. So with our category one anti-epileptics, these anti-epileptics, um, the prescriber does need to prescribe these medicines by brand. It's very important that the patient stays consistently on the same brand. So these include our, I call it C triple P. So that is our carbamazepine, phenytoin, phenobarbital and primidone. Again, may not be pronouncing these correctly. With our category two, the the need to supply a, or the need for a patient to stay on the same brand is based on clinical judgment and a consultation with the patient and or the carer. So, and things such as the seizure frequency may be taken into account when deciding whether or not they need to stay on the same brand. But it's not as severe as I'd say the category ones where they must definitely stay on the same brand. So category two examples are Valproe, Lamotrigine and Clonazepam. Then with our category three, therapeutically speaking, these um, with these medicines, patients don't need to stay on the same brand. However, if it is going to cause confusion by changing the packaging, if it's going to cause confusion to a patient and or the carer, then they may need to stay on the same brand. But therapeutically speaking, changing the brand with these category three anti-epileptic medicines is usually fine. And examples include levaricetam, leveris, oh, pregabalin and gabapentin. So a European wide review established that with all anti-epileptic medication, there is a small increased risk of um, suicidal thoughts and behaviours. And that a key counselling point for patients and carers is that if a patient does experience any distressing um, feelings or thoughts, any mood changes or mood behaviours, um, if they have any feelings of suicidal self-harm, then they should seek immediate medical attention. They should not, though, stop taking their anti-epileptic medication. So in some situations, it would be OK to stop the medicine so that and then you'd seek medical attention. But with something like epileptic medication, it shouldn't be abruptly stopped. That if these feelings um, of um, behaviour changes or distressing thoughts, disturbing thoughts do develop, then it is really important that the patient does seek medical attention. There is something else to be aware of, which is anti-epileptic hypersensitivity syndrome, which is rare, but it can be fatal and is associated with some anti-epileptic medicines, such as carbamazepine and lamotrigine. 
So symptoms can develop between one to eight weeks of um, exposure and symptoms can include fever, rash and can escalate to liver dysfunction and even multi-organ failure. In such situations, the anti-epileptic would need to be withdrawn um, immediately and expert advice would be sought. So in terms of pregnancy, there is a risk of teratogenicity associated with, with all anti-epileptics, um, particularly if a, if a woman is on more than one anti-epileptic treatment. Valproate is associated with the highest risk of congenital malformations and therefore should be avoided in pregnancy. It's also not used in women of childbearing potential unless they meet the requirements of the Pregnancy Prevention Programme and everything else, nothing else has worked. Um, everything else has been inadequate um, or any other treatments have been ineffective, then only Valproate should be used. So especially for women of childbearing potential, that's a really key point with Valproate. It, it, it really isn't used unless in extenuating circumstances really. Now in order to reduce the risk of neural tube defects, folate supplementation should be started before conception and during the first trimester. In terms of breastfeeding, if it's monotherapy, breastfeeding is usually encouraged, um, but if a woman is on more than one anti-epileptic medicine, then uh, this is where expert advice, again special advice, would be sought. So what actually triggers a seizure? Well, there could be numerous reasons. It could be not being compliant with taking anti-epileptic medication. It could be taking alcohol or recreational drugs. Um, for some people, it's seeing flashing or flickering lights that can actually trigger a seizure. Stress or feeling unwell. In some cases, monthly periods as well can also be a trigger as can missing meals. So when we think of types of seizures, we can separate them into two types. We have generalised grand mal seizures and we have focal localised seizures. So with the general um, grand mal seizures, they tend to affect large areas of the brain, whereas the focal localised area, it, it's, um, it's kind of in the name, um, with focal or localised seizures, they affect specific regions of the brain. Examples include simple um, or complex seizures. With our grand mal seizures, our generalised seizures, examples include tonic-clonic seizures, absent seizures and myoclonic seizures. I'd really recommend for learning the different types of seizures to actually watch videos of what it looks like when a person is experiencing those different types of seizures. And these videos exist on multiple um, epilepsy charity websites. Um, make sure that you do always use reputable resources. but from my own experience, trying to learn this particular area, it was I found it quite difficult to remember exactly which what the symptoms and signs are with the different types of seizures that there are, but actually visually being able to see a video of someone experiencing those different types of videos, um, it is a useful way to then try and actually then remember what, what signs and symptoms that there are. Now treatments can vary depending on which um, seizure we're looking at. So if it is those tonic, clonic seizures, we could use first lines such as carbamazepine, lamotrigine, sodium valproate, but remember what I mentioned beforehand about sodium valproate and some of the limitations of uses. Um, with absence seizures, um, it could be something like ethosuximide. With myoclonic seizures, it might be topiramate, levorestatam, again, sodium valproate. Um, atonic and tonic seizures, sodium valproate, and with partial or focal seizures, um, carbamazepine or lamotrigine can be used. Now, if these first lines don't work, there are adjunctive or alternate um, treatments that can be used. Again, remember what I said right at the beginning, though, we want to try monotherapy. And if monotherapy of those first line don't work, then we will try um, using an alternative if, if it's still ineffective or inadequate, then we would use a um, combination, but monotherapy is preferred. So I hope you found this video useful. As I mentioned at the beginning, if you do want to know more about um, epilepsy in general, then do check out my Serena Speaks CNS video and also refer to the BNF. 
but I hope that you did find this video useful. Please make sure to hit that subscribe button and show the love because I really do appreciate it. And until next time, good luck with your revision and happy revisings.